In this third part of the tutorial, we're going to clean up the in-betweens created automatically by OpenTunes. What we're going to do is go into each frame and just edit it a little bit so that we can get rid of the hand shrinking and get rid of the foot shrinking as well as bring everything to the correct uh, forward and backward setting so that it's either in front or behind when it ought to be. And then we're going to clean up the line work so that we can get rid of this line which obviously shouldn't be here. So let's go to the first one. And I'm going to go to ink and paint while I do this. And our second one looks pretty good as far as overlapping. Let's go ahead and take our control point tool and manipulate this foot a little bit. See now that we've done the automatic in between you can put the points wherever you want them unless you intend on doing more in-betweening in which case you would not still not want to change the depth value I guess I'll call it the depth value of any of your shapes so we'll go ahead and take the hand kinda of make it like so it's like opening up a little bit and now this is going to be passing really fast, so you don't have to worry about being perfect. These are in-betweens. And as with traditional hand-drawn in-betweens, the accuracy, you can fudge the accuracy a little bit because it's going to be passing by so fast. So really all we want is the general shape to look good. All right, that looks good. Let's go to our next one. And now at this point, the head is starting to turn, so we'll want this ear to be in front. So let's go ahead and take our selection tool, click it, and again you can use the brackets where you can just right click and we'll bring it all the way to the front. And now we're going to go in and get rid of this line. And the way I'll do that is by using the erase tool. Just erase a little bit. You don't want to go too, try and be too specific with it because you might end up erasing lines you don't mean to erase like that. You can leave little sharp edges like this and go in with your control point edit tool and just sort of move them. All right, now we have some filling issues, so let's go back in and repair those. Now this is a problem that can occur when you're breaking the shape essentially. So what we're going to do is see if that helped. Select our fill tool. Nope, same problem. So instead what we will do is we will take our tape tool, there it is, we'll do endpoint to line, make sure we have join vectors selected, and we'll join that endpoint right to the line there. Now let's see if that helped. Take our fill tool, there we go. Now there are a number of ways to fix when you're having filling problems, there's a number of ways to fix it. Uh, I'll link in the description below to another video I did which explains in detail um, some various different types of uh, techniques you can use to deal with uh, filling vector shape issues which will arise especially if you're using audit in betweens and, and you're having shapes overlap one another like this. Alright, next frame. Now as you can see there can be, depending on the manner of in-between you do, there can be a lot of cleanup work, but I think in the end it is quicker than drawing all these in-between frames. So it's just a matter of what you're trying to accomplish. So let's take our eraser, we'll erase that, oh, see what we did is we're actually, we end up erasing the foot line beneath, so a good thing to make sure you're not erasing lines you don't want to is take your selection tool 
and select what you want the line work you want to be affecting with your erasing or really at all in general and you double click it now in order for this to happen see what what's happened is you see everything else grayed out and now anything I do with my tools will only affect this sort of depth level this object within my image see so but in order to be able to do this you have to make sure that the object selected is a group so you can see I have ungroup here because I've already grouped it if it wasn't grouped I wouldn't be able to double click on it like this and see it isolated so I'll go ahead and erase these lines and not worry about that foot underneath and once again move this like so let's see if we can get away with just this on the leg so go ahead and tape this in let's see if we made it work we may have to tape the leg as well but we might not have to see didn't have to all right let's go back to our select tool and get out of editing this single object and that looks pretty good and now our final image now that we've already done the in-betweening we can go ahead and edit this final image and there we have it our animation or at least the drawings for our animation in order for it to be an animation let's put it in our X sheet click the first one hold shift click the sev seventh one click and drag from the one you first selected we'll go ahead and make this disappear and now we have our nice animation. It's a little fast, so let's go ahead and select the whole column, all of the keyframes rather, reframe it to twos, bring our stop point down. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to show you what happens if you do change the depth value of an object or if you remove or add objects. Basically, if you do all the things I've warned you against, I'm going to show you what happens when you try to in between. Let's put some empty frames between these two images, this, this image and this image. Now, right now, if we select them all and in between, it looks pretty good because everything is in its rightful place, right? But if we undo that, now if I take this, the end of my auto in between, and let's just take, we'll just take this ear for instance, and let's bring it to the front. All right, that's all we did. Now let's try it again. Boom, look at that. So we've completely confused it. It doesn't know which shape is which now because the, the order of the different shapes has changed. In the same way, if we were to delete, let's delete the hand. Try it. We get the same thing. We get a bit of confusion. It doesn't know which shape is which and you can see it flips the feet for some reason it reads the left foot here as the right foot here and it flips the feet so it's not completely terrible it's not something you can't work with and fix well, let's see what happens if we add an object let's just take our geometry tool and add I'll just add a polygon right here and try in betweening once again, it gets confused about which object is which. And it does some crazy flipping. So it thinks that, apparently it thinks the right foot is this triangle. And it brings that foot up to become the triangle. And brings the right hand down to be the left foot. So basically you can get a sense that your, your main goal in doing auto in-betweening is to change as little as possible. Basically, all you want to change is the location of control points. So that's it. We're done with our animation.
we created the two key poses, automatically created in-betweens, and cleaned things up a bit. If you like, continue to the next tutorial, which will be a time lapse of me creating three different animations using automatic in-betweening and the techniques that I've showed you in the previous three videos.